One, two. One, two. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Perhaps we could, uh, not sure this works. Yes, it does. Yes. Apologies about the uh, apologies about the room, but if we could uh, start because we've got uh, limited uh, limited time uh, this morning. Thank you very much indeed for coming along to the uh, ICANN uh, Open Forum, uh, which is a, a traditional event on the on the IJF calendar for us. Uh, today's session is going to be in, uh, in, in, in four parts. Uh, Shireen Chalabi, our, our board chair, will make a few remarks. We'll let, then have some interactive, uh, we'll have an interactive session on uh, GDPR, who is, and uh, developments around that. Uh, we'll then have a, a, an interactive session on uh, generic top-level domains and the, uh, and the process under which uh, ICANN has uh, been developed, or the community has been developing uh, policy on that. And then we'll have an open, uh, an open session in which any questions you want to raise about ICANN's work uh, uh, or ICANN's uh, role in the broader internet uh, ecosystem, please feel to do so. And then our, our CEO and President uh, Joran Marbi will say a few words at the, uh, at the end. So perhaps I could, uh, is the door, I'm, I'm sorry about the standing, <laughs> but it proves we're popular, I suppose. But <laughs> Perhaps I could uh, hand over the uh, floor to Shireen Chalabi. Good morning, everyone. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I, I could barely hear you, Nigel, so the microphones are not working very well. Anyway, uh, welcome, everyone, to the ICANN Open Forum, and it's really good to be back at the IGF. So this morning, I am joined by uh, Joran Marby, our CEO, who all of you um, know very well, and Teresa Swinehart, our deputy CEO, I'm also joined by several of my board colleagues, uh, Sarah Deutsch, who's here, uh, Avery, uh, Lito, and Leon Sanchez. There are also other board members. I can see Ron sitting there, and uh, any other board members around uh, in the audience, and Duncan's there. Thank you. So um, it's a good time, an interesting time to be um, uh, involved with ICANN. Uh, as you know, we celebrated our 20th anniversary uh, in Barcelona recently, and we're in the middle of developing our strategic plan, our next plan for the year 2021 to 2025. And I think most of you know, and some of you who have not been to ICANN meetings, you're probably interested to know, that our community is, uh, through the strategic planning work, is reinforcing uh, two things to the ICANN board, to the ICANN community. Uh, the first one is that uh, we need to work with other organizations to champion the single open internet and prevent its fragmentation. Uh, each, each, of course, working within their own remit. And the second thing, there is the reinforcement of the multi-stakeholder model. Um, although it needs to evolve and needs to uh, become more effective, but there's strong reinforcement of the multi-stakeholder model. So it goes without absolute uh, concern, it goes without say that ICANN is a true champion of the single internet and of the multi-stakeholder model. We are also a champion and an advocate of the IGF. We've been involved with the IGF since its inception, and we consider the IGF as truly a unique multi-stakeholder forum on a global basis. There are many on a global basis where an array of internet topics and public policy issues can be discussed. So with that in mind, as Nigel said, we have two objectives for this meeting. One, we want to engage with you on two topics that are top of our agenda and which we believe have an impact on the wider internet community. The first one is GDPR, and the second one is new GTLDs. Then we want to give you an opportunity to ask any question you want on any topic uh, that is of interest to you. So we're going to have uh, three slots, therefore, each one 15, sec 15 minutes each, 15 seconds. <laughs> I, I didn't have a coffee this morning, so I know this is uh, going to happen to me. So uh, each one 15 minutes, right? So the first one would be GDPR and would be moderated by uh, Joran, Sarah, and Teresa. Second would be GTLD, would be moderated by Avery, uh, Leon, and Lito. And then the open questions will be moderated by Joran and I. So I know that 
I see a lot of familiar faces, and you guys are not shy of asking questions. In fact, the very difficult question. Um, so I'm sure you'll do so. But there are also new faces. So I hope you guys, too, feel free to ask difficult questions, because that's what we're here for. So given the tight deadline and time, say, um, Nigel, would you act as the timekeeper to make sure every session doesn't run more than 15 minutes? Is that OK? Absolutely, sir. OK. With that in mind, I'm going to hand over to Teresa Swinehart to kick off the GDPR session. Teresa. Thank you, everybody. And, and I'm feeling the time pressure, so I'll do that. It's great to see many familiar faces. I know some who've trekked uh, not only to the ICANN meeting, but more recently, uh, Dubai. So uh, welcome to the tail end of what might be a long fall. Uh, for many of you in the room, uh, the, the, the topics that I'm going to cover here are going to be familiar. But uh, for the benefit of everybody, we want to make sure that we cover it all. Uh, one, of, one of the issues that ICANN has been dealing with over the past, um, can everybody hear me OK? Because I'm not sure how this is good. Uh, one of the issues that ICANN has been working on um, well over uh, a year, uh, year and a half, two years maybe, um, has been um, the uh, area around compliance uh, with regards to the uh, European Data Protection Legislation, namely the GDPR. And uh, in the context of that, uh, the accessibility to the who is database information, that is the information when you register a domain name and the information that is publicly available versus not publicly available. Uh, as many of you know, there is no centralized database for who is information. It's a decentralized mechanism. Uh, and historically, that information has been publicly available. Um, as we worked to uh, look at how to be compliant with GDPR, we engaged in extensive uh, community uh, dialogue around this on what model, what mechanism needs to be put into place uh, to be compliant uh, that can address uh, the over 2,500 contracted parties that we have, uh, and how do we ensure that uh, in relation to the contracts that we have with them. Uh, so we went through several iterations um, of dialogue with the community to uh, both better understand how to address this uh, through what we referred to as a uh, calzone model, so a dialogue around that, uh, equated somewhat with a pizza that has different ingredients, and um, I'll let our CEO explain how he got to the rest of the name. Um, and from the calzone model and the dialogue that we had in relation to that with both the community uh, and um, ongoing discussions at the time with the data protection authorities, uh, came to what was referred to as the temporary specification, which is namely a, um, an adjustment to the contract with the contracted parties uh, to um, have publicly and non-publicly available information uh, to be um, addressing the GDPR. Uh, so the adoption of the temp spec occurred in May um, of this past year. Um, it was reaffirmed by the board on the 21st of August and then again uh, last week. Um, what the uh, temporary specification or this adjustment to the contract does is it also triggers an expedited policy development process uh, within our community. Uh, so that work is well underway within the uh, GNSO, another acronym, and apologies for throwing that out. Um, that expedited policy development process has a year uh, to try to uh, address a range of issues, uh, including um, whether uh, the temporary specification is the right avenue to go. Um, there are many in the room who are probably participating in that, so I'll let them answer some of the more detailed questions uh, in relation to that work. Uh, so with the temporary specification in place, one of the outstanding issues has been how does one access uh, the non-publicly available information? Um, there's historically been mechanisms to do that um, easier for law enforcement potentially, but there's also a, a wide range of interest from other stakeholder groups, intellectual property community, um, cyber researchers, um, a range of parties uh, that have had historical interest in um, accessibility to uh, the who is related information. Uh, so in that, uh, in um, our last ICANN meeting at 63, um, we also got uh, the, the strong interest from the community and the mandate to go ahead and see how we can look at uh, trying to limit the liability or lessen the liability of the contracted parties to look at how we could explore a possible um, avenue for unified access um, that is uh, scalable, that works globally, uh, and that might ease things and not uh, put at risk uh, a sort of a fragmented kind of approach to this. 
Uh, on the 20th of August, we put out um, a, a conceptual model that had been based on community input uh, that um, has also fed into this entire process, ranges, uh, poses a range of questions. Uh, and also uh, proposes using um, a, a technical avenue or exploring using a technical avenue uh, referred to as RDAP or the Registration Data Access Protocol, which is a new kind of technical protocol. Uh, so this work is underway um, at the ICANN meeting uh, 63. We also, uh, Joran had announced the intention to establish a, a technical study group to take a look um, at further exploring the technical avenues and whether that would lessen uh, the liability. And we continue to engage in discussions with um, the European Data Protection Authorities as well on clarifications around the law and the applicability of the law specifically as we try to explore these other avenues. Uh, we publish all the correspondence we receive. We provide regular updates to the community, either through blog postings or webinars, and uh, those are all accessible on our website. And I'm happy to delve into more detail uh, later on, but that's the high-level sort of roadmap of how we got to where we are today. If I can turn this over now to Sarah. Thank you. So. Um I'd like to just talk in a bit more detail about the third-party access to non-public registration data, which is one of the main major issues under discussion. And um, as Teresa described, the temporary specification resulted in the redaction of personal data from publicly available Who is records. And the temporary spec also required ICANN's contracted parties to provide reasonable access to this personal data to third parties based on legitimate interests as defined in GDPR. So ha as Teresa has described, ICANN Org is exploring avenues for providing a unified access mechanism that can be used across contracted parties that provide who is services, and we're looking for a way to administer that with uh, the contracted parties. Um, and at the ICANN meeting last month in Barcelona, we saw the community actually coalesce around this approach in an, an effort to diminish the legal risks for the contracted parties who provide these services. And this provides a, a mandate of sorts to continue these conversations. Um, this support and input from the ICANN community will be very important as we move forward on this idea. Um, it will inform the discussions with the European Commission and the European Data Protection Board as ICANN tries to ascertain legal certainty for any such model. Uh, and it, ultimately, it will be up to the community to recommend a model for implementation. That's, so that's a very important point to emphasize. And um, ICANN's work is to provide input to help ensure the legality of that model. So we encourage everyone in this room and outside this room to, to engage in these conversations and, and work with us on this. Uh, you're on. Well, I've, I've, one of the learnings from this is that ICANN as an institution has to learn how to work with uh, new legislative proposals that comes around the world. I mean, we, we talked about this several times, and I'm, I'm in many speeches has talked about it, that we, when, when people are now talking about internet, it seems like there are two internets. One of them is the one we use, you know, for everything from making financials to uh, uh, talking to our loved ones or ordering tickets or anything, and that's, that seems to be one internet. And the other internet seems to be the ones that has fake news or uh, bad people are doing something. And, and if you, what we see now is that many legislators around the world is now looking into one aspect of how internet is used. And sometimes they don't recognize it's only one connected internet, which is a fairly limited box. And what we see now is that there are potential that some legislation actually can have an effect on the ability for people to connect to the internet or actually share information with each other. ICANN is a, is a technical organization. We have no political opi opinions about the actual means of the legislation. But we need to figure out a way to better interact with governments so we can be there to help them to understand that some parts of legislation actually can end up bringing it, making it impossible for people actually to connect to the internet or actually be able to connect to other people on the internet, which is why we're doing this. And, and we are working, uh, and we will, in the end of this year, come up with a sort of proposal how 
I can, as an institution, and I can do work, uh, could interact as a technical uh, a, you know, helper in those cases. We already sometimes get invited by governments to, to look on legislations, and we have actually seen proposals for legislations that could make it impossible for people to connect to the internet. And, and we don't think that that is the intention of the laws, uh, but, but we sort of get the feeling that it's unintentionally, or the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It's, a, you know, no one has done has been, ICANN has never really thought about this before because it hasn't been necessary. And, and elected um, politicians is doing this for, for what I think often the right reasons. In, privacy is important to discuss. Security is important to discuss. Um, and, and you know, the, during the discussions yesterday, during the peace forum here, it was sort of essential that some of those discussions has to happen. So we don't take sides in those discussions, but I think that most people agree that if you disconnect or make it less harder for people to actually connect to the internet, those are completely other problems. So I also urge people to think about there's only one internet. There are not two internets. And if you're using internet for something else, then, you know, if you, the way we use internet is essential to, to have. Uh, and it's, we have to, the elected politicians, whoever is in charge or uh, on the political views, always have to keep that in mind so we don't break the box. Thank you. So it's question times. Who, who, um, who would like to um, raise a question about what you heard or make a comment? Hello. What? Thank you. Sorry, I, I wanted newcomers and those who are not involved with the community, uh, with ICANN community, to ask a question. But um, I thought I'm just going to start the discussion and maybe they won't feel shy afterwards. Uh, so you said that um, as there are a couple of comments that have been made in this session. And I would like to reframe what is being said. Um, so I can, uh, for 20 years, did not feel the need to redact the personal information of domain name registrants because it was it did it was not on the side of privacy protection. It was not on the side of data protection. It was because of GDPR that I can, uh, in the end, I had to uh, become compliant because of the fine. So. And we also need to change this culture of uh, thinking about uh, say, saying that uh, we need to have access to this data, but we also equally need to uh, protect the personal information of domain name registrants. So that's just what I wanted to uh, say, because I think th this keeps getting lost uh, in the conversation. And um, that's it. Oh, well, I, I do agree. Um, for right and wrong, uh, GDPR has um, started a conversation within an ICAD um, about privacy. And uh, I'm the first one to say that, yes, we're late, and it's rather good that we have it. It doesn't mean it's easy. Um, who is, as you know, is a part of our it's a very integrated part of what ICANN does, uh, and I, I'm, I have a great belief in the expedited PDP's ability to, to come up with a policy. I mean, as, as Teresa sort of said, the reasons why we did the temp spec was because we were forced to do it, uh, because we had to be uh, compliant with the law at a specific time, which is why we invented a process for community input, which is basically a decision that belongs to me, how do I make something important, how do I make uh, ICANN org legal, uh, legally compliant. But, you know, um, there's been a lot of discussions about, but, you know, it's, you're right. I mean, there is nothing to say. The private, GDPR has caused a lot of privacy discussions, not only within ICANN, but all over the world and in many different sectors. So we are just one of them who's now looking at something that hasn't been looked upon before. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, my name is Walter Natris, and I think something very important was said along the way about reaching out from technical communities and more specialized communities to a larger community. And one of the venues to do that is exactly at the IGF. And what surprises me through these years, uh, and this is, I think is my ninth, is how little this actually happens. And a, a session like this, I think, should be a session that may take hours and bring in the right people to actually discuss together what certain decisions by either politicians or by a technical community mean for other stakeholder communities. And that is something which is v severely underused at the IGF, which is something I think is something worth exploring and discussing with the MAG in the, in the near future. Thank you. I'm all for it. And for the record, I was not supposed to talk about GDPR. It was Becky, but she was late arrival. I had this one day without GDPR. Hi there, good morning. Colin Curry for the record. Uh, I kind of wanted to pick up on something that Farzi was talking about, about reframing um, discussions and, and perceptions. So um, looking beyond GDPR, it seems like ICANN Org has been doing a better job in looking at which, which laws will be applicable to it. I know that there was a kind of a, co a, a running list that's updated on a quarterly basis. So that kind of information and seeking legal clarity um, more ahead of time is, is a really good and you know wise approach. But I, I just wanted to highlight the need for that, uh, in, that work, uh, that ongoing work to feed back into the community. I found it really interesting this morning in the previous session where um, one of ICANN's strategic plan objectives was um, the maturation of the multi-stakeholder model or something along those lines as a governance, as a governance model. So I just wanted to emphasize that if um, as the ICANN org relies on the community to develop this bottom-up consensus-based policy, it's really important for us to have all of the resources available to us as, co as the community members, and part of that is being able to anticipate uh, laws or, or changes in the ecosystem and be able to make better policy, just because if the EPDP, you know, I don't want to jinx it, but if it doesn't deliver on its mandate, then that would, uh, that means that we would have to kind of go back to scratch and we would fall further behind the curve. So I think it's in everyone's interest, both ICANN Org and the community and the broader ecosystem for us to have the tools available to us to make things, make policy that's more forward looking and that anticipates changes before they happen. I mean, that's why, that's why we actually provide, that's why we assemble this list. Um, <laughs> So we, can, um, so we can give the community an opportunity to see the legislations that is now dis under discussion without taking sides within the actual. But, but the problem is also with many of those laws is that, I mean, GDPR is a, I, I sometimes call it the mother-in-law, not because of my mother-in-law, but it's just that I said this joke many times, but it actually means it. It's when I was a teenager, my mother told me that I can go out if I behaved. And, and then I went out and behaved, and apparently she had a different definition of behavior actually meant. And that is one of the problems with this law, is that it tells you you, you should behave, but it actually don't tell you how to behave. And, and in a complex environment like, for instance, the West, but remember, I can, the ecosystem that we have together with our technical partners, the ITF especially, we have thousands of databases. Internet is built around transparency and accountability by naming people's names. Uh, and it goes back in history. So if you look, for instance, from policies from uh, ITF, you want to know who actually wrote a policy, uh, wrote things to become standards because it's a part of it. And I think that it's very important that we together and the community talk about the right balance for this. And it goes back to what we talked about already more than a year, one and a half years ago, we said that everybody's life would have been easier if we actually had a policy for who is. We don't. So you're right. We are chasing the tails, and there's, there's a lot of things we should have done differently. But now we are where we are. And, and I don't have, I mean, I've only been around for about three years, so I don't, you know, history is interesting, but it doesn't help me. But to have that conversation within the community, and I think going into the expedited PDP, I, I went on record and said the same thing. If we can come up with a policy about privacy, 
that would be much better for I think for everybody and will help us in the conversations with um, uh, health conversations the thing is that I think that my understanding is we actually have had this conversation within ICANN for the last 20 years but we've never been able to reach a conclusion about it and, and it's unfair to say we never talked about privacy we talked a lot about privacy we just never came up with the right solution which we share with almost everybody else so I, you know, again, I agree. We, if we can come up with, a, you know, a policy for privacy uh, that is in the lem limits of the law, because the law is something is going to be affecting us. The European law is 28 member states plus the other countries in there. Uh, other countries will come up with similar laws, and it's much better for us if we can come up with something that gives, sort of provides the opportunity for information to be there when it's necessary and takes away information that is unnecessary. I'll let someone else moderate because I'm a really lousy moderator. I don't have a clue who is in so, order. I just, um, just bring to your attention that our 15 minutes plan has completely been busted. So uh, what we could do, I mean, we said we'll have a session on GDPR, a session on new GTLD, and an open session. Uh, I see there's interest in GDPR. Why don't we continue a little bit and then move to GTLD? And, I think we, we'll, we have to be flexible and see where the interest is. So we continue a little bit with the GDPR. So there is Sarah and then Leon and then Dirk and then yourself. Okay. Thank you. So you raise a really interesting point because many of these laws and regulations are, uh, at least on their face, some of them don't even look to be within ICANN's remit, but they could have effect on ICANN, so it will be very important going forward to kind of get ahead of them and to track them as best we can, but also uh, to track shadow, what's known as shadow regulation. These are things that sometimes are called best practices, sometimes are things that are a bit more nefarious, but still could have an impact on the domain name system. Um, and ICANN does a very good job of tracking things, but I would urge the community, since you are the eyes and ears out there, to keep us informed of things you may be hearing or learning about. Uh, some of these are kind of submarine issues. They, they, they look innocuous and they surface later, um, but thank you for raising that. Thanks, Shereen. Uh, just following up on uh, Sarah's comment and Colin's uh, issue, I think that input from the community, is, it's, it's key here. Uh, I can has eyes uh, in many parts, but the community is wider. So we need to look at this from a wider perspective and not only from uh, legislation. For example, uh, some trade agreements are incorporating some uh, dispositions that actually impact or could impact some of the community members like CCTLDs. So we need to be aware of this and uh, if anyone in the community is aware of a piece of legislation, trade agreement or uh, any other uh, regulation that might be uh, just happening to to surface anywhere, just make us aware of that and we, we will be able to add this to the list of uh, legislations that I can is following. Okay, so uh, raise your hand if you want to speak about GDPR so that I know who's on the list. Dirk, so. Anybody else? Okay, we'll close the list after these two questions and then start on uh, new GTLDs. Thank you. Um, Dirk Krzyzanowski, running the Berlin and the Hamburg top-level domains. I think we don't fall behind uh, the, the position in, in privacy uh, with if the EPDP process is going to fail next year in May. And that's because all the uh, European registries and registrars, and we have made some some um, studies about this, have implemented measures to grant access to legitimacy um, parties like uh, law enforcement. And so this, these processes have been proven meanwhile because all we have, uh, like, like .de, .uk, .fr, .berlin, we have all gotten our requests from um, interested parties and uh, granted access to these data. And what I think, but what I think is, uh, we don't need that unified access model. Or some call it ugly, uni, axi, uh, ugly access model. 
<laughs> because I, I think we, w we won't implement this in the European registries and registrars won't implement this mo model even if I can come up with this model because it's against um, the, the European GDPR. That's my opinion. Yeah. Joran wants to respond. I mean, first of all, what you're saying that everybody's agreed is not right, and you know that. I mean, for instance, if you look at the CC community, they've implemented many different solutions. The other thing is that you don't know. You don't know today. The only thing you know about access to which information that could be legally stored or displayed is because we did the work for you. So because of the guidance we got from the DPAs, which is, by the way, is about you as well. What we did was actually lowering your risk by doing that. So, and that is the only thing that has ever been written down. It's not about what you think, but the DPS has given us guidance. And that guidance has given you a lower risk. So, much of the work in this, and, and by the way, if you go outside the temp spec, what is in there, which is the best, which the DPS has acknowledged, because they've written us and acknowledged it, if you go outside that, it's your risk. And it's your risk alone. And if you, I mean, anyone wants to are willing to take that risk, I'm fine with it because it's not my risk. It's your risk. What we are trying to do, because it's in ICANN's, you know, what ICANN is about, and you know that, that who is is a part of that, uh, is that what we're trying to do as the next step is to diminish your risk. And if we can get, which I don't know if we can get, if we get the DPAs to do the next thing we were asking them for, to diminish your legal risk, and you still don't comply, that's a contractual discussion that we're going to have. Thank you. Okay. Your, uh, Hello, Klaus Stoll. Just a slight change uh, in the context. I want to uh, share an experience of last weekend. I was last weekend in meetings with private sector companies uh, who were all affected by this legislation. Um, they were bitterly complaining about the impact it had, but one significant part of this one was none of them had ever heard about ICANN. And I think it's very important that, for example, yes, there is a, 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 a business sector and a business constituency in ICANN, but there are much more people who don't even know what's going on there, and I think there are natural allies there which uh, really need to, to have a little bit of, uh, of um, uh, more information and better contacts. And one thing which came out of the meeting was quite simply, they were very clever. They actually got some of the po uh, politicians from the EU in this meeting and described it. And some of these EU legislators came out of the meeting and said, if we knew that we never would have done that and that. And I think I can partially in the community is in the same position. We have to explain better the background. We have to explain better the technology. We have to explain better the mechanism, how the DNS works. And then I think some of the stuff uh, uh, will, uh, will actually happen smoother and the goal what Fasenay described will ca actually become realistic and can be reached. We can get privacy, but we can't get privacy based on things which are half-cooked. A message, um, I think we're done, yes. Okay. <laughs> The message was, we're done, <laughs> right. Okay, uh, I think we can go on with GDPR f for a long time, but, but I, yeah. I so l let's switch subject and talk about the uh, new GTLD. There's a lot of discussion uh, from different parts of the community asking the board and asking the GNSO, when is the next round, when is the next round, when is the next round? And we always say the community has to make that decision to, the GNSO has to come up with that policy. It's not the board that's going to um, uh, to make that decision on behalf of the community. So uh, I'm going to hand over to Avery, who will just uh, brief us on where the GNSO is and what are the various issues, and then we'll open it up for questions. Okay. Th thank you. Um, 
it, it's sort of interesting to find myself briefing on where the GNSO is, but uh, as a board member, I've certainly been watching it and certainly have a long history of, of being very interested. They're basically working very hard, I would say, to try and get it right this time. Now, at the last round, there was a true belief that we would learn a lot from that round, that we would spend time and we would fix everything that we had learned about. We assumed that we could do that in a year. We were very wrong about that. And, and basically the work is going on and, and basically working through everything. A year was actually spent gathering up all the issues that people had with that previous round. Everything from the application to contention, to how objections were done, to, to, to how uh, contracts were done, to how public interest. Basically every issue, I think there were 90 plus issues. And over the years, the uh, working group, the policy development process working group has been working through them methodically in subgroups and in plenary. And they've gotten now to the point on many of them where they're putting out their, their, their first comment periods. We've seen the first of two comment periods. We're about to see uh, one come out soon on the geographic names issue, which has been one of the great questions. Within that area, uh, the GNSO has done some, some, some very uh, new way of working with the policy development process in terms of not only inviting the other stakeholders that care about geographic names to participate, but actually offering them the opportunity to participate in the leadership of the groups that were working on that. So we expect to see fairly soon a, a, a comment period. The comment periods that have been coming out, and these are for everyone, not just the, the ICANN smaller community, not only suggests, gives suggested recommendations for the things they think they have reached consensus on, but asks questions about things they haven't. So it's very important that people actually read these things and, and answer the, the questions. So um, that was it. I don't know if, Lito, you wanted to talk a little bit about the timing just so that we, we, we shared the conversation. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, a brief comment only to reiterate the, that the timing for the new, for the second round is uh, depending on the community input. We have, we as a community have received uh, comments, reviews, and uh, advices from uh, almost every constituency within ICANN, uh, touching on different issues uh, from lessons learned from the first round. So we as a community will need to reconcile all of these observations, comments, uh, advices, uh, and uh, we have to do that before uh, going to the second round. So uh, that is uh, marking the time. Some of, some of these reviews are, re are already there. Some of these advices are public and are already there. Uh, we may be waiting for a few more, but uh, in any case, we need to uh, take into account all of those and uh, come up uh, with a better version of the, of the uh, round, of the GTLD rounds. That's it. Uh, Leon, since you're the third one on our group talking about this, the question I wanted to pass from you is ALAC, who has been part of this whole process, also has a very active process of its own where in sort of a microcosm we see everything from those that say there should never be any more GTLDs, we have enough of them, to those that say we should be doing more public interest, more community, more whatever GTLDs. And I wonder if you can sort of give a quick snapshot of what, what that looks like. Thank you very much, Ari. Indeed, uh, there are uh, different points of views within the at-large community as to uh, should the uh, next round of new GTLDs happen or not. And uh, as you rightly point, there are those who uh, don't think that there is a need to open a next round, but there is also another part of the at-large community that thinks that 
it actually brings a lot of value to open the next round of uh, new GTLDs. Uh, maybe the main concern from the at-large community as I read it is to have better ways to support uh, community applications. So this is where I think the at-large community is now centered these discussions, uh, mainly in two, in two issues. One is, of course, uh, uh, consumer protection, consumer trust, and the other one is uh, community applications that should be uh, uh, supported and uh, given priority over uh, uh, non-community applications. So the discussions are going along these uh, edges and uh, it is, it is uh, something that, that is on top of mind of, uh, of the large community. Also the large community has been uh, very active in uh, different uh, subgroups and, and tracks uh, in regard to uh, the geo names, uh, provisions, etc. We have a very active uh, group of participants, and that is something that it's also on top of the concerns of uh, of the at large community. And as uh, as my colleagues have said, uh, it is up to the community to set up the timeline for this to actually go forward. And uh, we as board members will continue to uh, work with the community and 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 review the different work that is being carried out. So when uh, the community feels that we are getting to the moment in which we can uh, have a next round of new utilities, then uh, we'll, we'll gladly uh, review all the information at hand and, and, and make a decision. Thanks, Avery. Thanks. So uh, just, just to end this, and, and, and it's a broad topic, one that I can talk about endlessly. Um, I could talk about most anything endlessly. <laughs> um, the, the other side of that coin is at the last ICANN meeting, I had several come up to, people come up to me and said, you know, forget all the other stuff. We need more dot brand GTLDs and we're ready to go now and we'll accept any set of conditions, just let us go. So we have a very wide community of very different interests and, and that, that, that were basically, the, the GNSO is trying to sort of massage into one set of consensus recommendations that the board will be able to accept. Um, I guess we'd open it for questions now. Do you do the questions? Do I do the questions? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do the first question if you want. Okay. Um, can you tell us um, on the subsequent procedures, is there, um, where is the GNSO coming from in terms of should there be one next big round or should the door be open to first come, first serve or should there be f various rounds, one for brands, one for community and so on? Wh what is the thinking? Okay, obviously I cannot speak for the GNSO but in reporting what I've been watching in the subsequent procedures, there's definitely a recognition that We've spent enough time now that we've created pent up demand again. So one cannot go into a first come first serve with the, the pent up demand. So the subsequent procedures will be some kind of round recommendation. Now, one of the things that's still pending, it was one of the things that was in their last review. It was part of what they asked the community of, should there be multiple rounds a year and, and following each other? One of the things that, that they definitely want to achieve, I believe, is that no more stopping. That this time there was a stop review planned after the last round because we knew, I was part of the, the, the GNSO at that time, we knew that we would probably need to learn that we didn't get everything right even if it's the case this time that the GNSO doesn't get everything right, the proposal is that we don't do another one of these stops, that, that we also learn how to, whether we're doing successions of rounds, whether we get to the point someday where there is a first come, first serve, or perhaps short blocks, that any policy that needs to be delivered to, to fix things would happen in parallel and would happen without stopping the ongoing process. So I think there's a fair commitment to that, to 
exactly what kind of round, how long it is, the succession of rounds. There are various proposals and they're still working through them. Thank you. So time for questions. We have a question there. The uh, no stopping is something that's really gotten my attention, but uh, I have to think about that. The question that I have is, in, in our first round, I think that there was uh, some disappointment, at least I know I had disappointment, and I'm sure it's shared by others, that we didn't have enough community applications and we didn't have enough IDN applications and we just didn't see the mix of applications that we had hoped to see. I know following that, that initial round, uh, there was um, some hue and cry, particularly from Latin American countries and from African countries, that not enough was done to raise a uh, country's attention to this opportunity. Yet I think in that discussion, we also explored the reality that there are reasons why, notwithstanding all of ICANN's best efforts to promote the, the program, to promote the initiative, that uh, there may not be sufficient infrastructure, there may be other reasons in any one country why people are not able to step forward. But as we move toward a second round, I'm not sure that we have yet adequately addressed what can we do as a community to heighten awareness of, interest in, and support for uh, more of these different kinds of applications that we had hoped to see. Yeah, no, and, and I was among those that, that, that shared that disappointment at that time. I think that's also part of being discussed. It's it's part of this whole universal acceptance thing. Not to pay no attention to the rabbit, but but to the universal acceptance, which is another one of the projects that's ongoing within ICANN. Because when the IDNs started, while there was an infrastructure where they could be handled at the root level in terms of handing them in mailers, in terms of handling them in people's systems, in terms of handling them everywhere, there just wasn't the support. So while at the root an IDN, an internationalized domain name, could be handled, it just it wasn't quite possible and still isn't quite possible to do it. Not all email can handle an IDN. Not all email can handle a five letter. So, so that's part of it. There is also discussion, and I think this is one of the strong pushes that comes out of the ALAC side of that on the community. I think there's also some push from it uh, in, in the GAC for trying to make sure that we do a, a, a larger preparation, a more, using some of the resources that we've got in the, you know, the, the outreach parts of the company and in, in, in some of the outreach with, with the at-large organizations that are, you know, spread, to basically try and get the word out for the applications. But some of the things that, that you mentioned about the absence of infrastructure and stuff remain an issue and and I'm not sure what the answer to that is. I don't know if anyone else here. Yeah, Leon has Leon more. Wants to add something. Thank you, Avery. Uh, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I mean, uh, many of the processes we follow at ICANN are learning processes and I think this is one example. Having uh, the first round happened we learned from it that there were many things that could be improved, one of them being uh, how to uh, better communicate and how to promote uh, communities to apply for new UTLDs and how to support those applications. So uh, I think that input from the community is key for uh, whatever outcome we get of the different processes that are feeding into uh, possible next round of GTLDs to let us improve how things are getting done. And I, I mean, I, I have nothing else to add to that. I, I know that many members of the committee are uh, worried about how we are going to improve support for community applications. So any input you can provide during the different processes that are being uh, held uh, par parallel to uh, to feed into uh, next GTLD round would be key for 
for the organization and the board to actually be able to address these concerns. So um, I've got one hand there. Oh, Pat, sorry, I didn't see you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sarah, did you want to add to, or shall I move on to? You can move on. Also. Okay, go ahead first, and then Dirk after that. Yeah. yeah. So this is Pat King from Bearsign. On, on the brands topic, um, we see a non-insignificant number of brands and some significant brands actually returning their TLDs from the first round uh, because they've not found a reason to do that, to do, to do anything with them. Um, my, my concern about a brands only round or even the brands in the future is that we have a lot of suppliers who are talking about the, the pent up demand from the brands. I don't think we've seen any studies that actually talk about what the brands are looking for. So, so I'm concerned that we're moving or talking about moving quickly on something that we don't have a lot of real data. So, and, and the second thing I wanted to add was on the no stopping, Aubrey. Um, on the no stopping, I'm concerned that at some point in time, we're going to have a root zone which is gated by our regulator that will be competitive with some of the TLDs that we are issuing uh, to, to other operators. Okay. Uh on, on the brands, um, the only thing I would comment on the brands only round, and I, and I don't think I was actually going there, although you're right, people have called for it. My impression, and again, it's not a decision, it's a decision that GNSO would have to make to recommend that, is I have gotten requests for a brands only, a communities only, an IDN only, basically just about every type of GLD one can think of have asked for a round of their own, a, a first round. So I think to find ourselves ever in the position of deciding which, which one would get a solo round would, would be almost impossible. What I think I meant about the not stopping, it's not that there never may be a reason to say, you know, we don't need more GTLZs. That would be a policy question of, of, of in the future because we ran into issues though I think it would take us quite a while to, to get there. It's that basically if we see a problem in the policy that we don't stop the whole process of GTLDs, that we basically, like, like we do at the moment, we don't stop registrars from registering simply because we're doing a PDP on how to fix a registration issue. And, and, and that's what I meant about the not stopping. Um, you know, we have various constraints like from the Stability and Security Advisory Committee that, you know, at a certain point we may need reach a number that's problematic. You know, again, we're nowhere close to it, nor will we get close to it in a decade, but there are all kinds of other issues that, that could cause other policies to say, yeah, stop. And so that's what I meant by not stopping to do a policy correction. Sarah has a quick comment and then I'll, I'll go to Dirk. So my comment really goes, I think, both to what Susan raised about community and also your comment about brands. I think it, it's important to focus on how can we improve the value of these new TLDs, not just kind of the volume, uh, because if you're if you're a dot brand and you just register based on fear that someone else may take it, you may you may give it up after a certain point, no longer need it, and similarly, just speculating for the sake of speculation may not be the best use of value versus a real community using it for real things. So I, I would love to see us encouraging kind of valued use of the domain names and, and teaching people about the value that is there. Thank you. So Dirk Krasinowski with my different head of uh, TLD consultancy on. We in the last round had consulted a lot of uh, community top level domain names and recommended to do so for them. And the result was that the community feature, which is itself a super thing for, for communities, ended up um, in, a, in a really long delay of uh, most of the community top-level domain names because they were dragged by competitors in, in uh, uh, ICANN's accountability mechanisms, which themselves are good too, but uh, bringing this together I couldn't recommend communities anymore because you can say to, to interested parties, it will take you years and years before you get your top-level domain name. 
for adding to this. I, I'd like to reiterate that, that we as a consultancy, we have uh, quite a number of uh, geographic uh, top level domain interested parties like community, uh, like cities and, and regions and, and also some brands. Not thousands, but um, a nice uh, number of, of uh, interested parties. Oh, thank you. So we have six minutes left. Uh, any other question on new GTLDs? All right. You're delaying the general questions about anything else. So go ahead. If a new round could start in, in 19? Just dot brands. Yeah. Dot brands. I don't know of any recommendation that that would be the case. So while it's impossible for me to say something is impossible, I see no way in which it could be possible. <laughs> Okay, um, no more questions on UGTLDs? One more question. Hi, uh, Clement, I'm a PhD student. Um, we just learned some weeks ago uh, that Akram was leaving ICANN for uh, donuts. How do you prevent some uh, ICANN executive, executive board to join or to create a company dedicated to G new GTLD application? Excellent. So we finished with new GTLDs. Now we're in the open questions. So Joran, we've got five minutes for that. I mean, first of all, I mean, this is this from time to time. This question comes up, and, and first of all, inside the community, who or the, I mean, look at this: the one who writes policies are actually within the community, uh, because what I can org is actually implementing what the community decides. So the, if and sometimes told me that we are the regulator, if anyone would be a regulator, this is actually the ICANN community, and especially when it comes to the util program, it's the GNSO. And, and my understanding is that people change jobs all the time there. So the second thing is that Akram left. Uh, he worked for us for eight years. He's a good friend of mine, and started working for a company which I think is called Cinnamon Bun. Um, but you know, and it's very unusual that any executive on that level actually leaves for anything. And I think we have to go back like four or five years ago. That happened last time. Um, California employment laws are very specific, but we have some very hard rules in place when anyone leaves ICANN for anything. And um, that is, you know, it's not like you can just leave. So there are documents, there are agreements, and there are written things how this is handled. But then again, you know, we don't, we, we don't tell that you that entering, for instance, in a work group that if you change job, you can't do that. People work for ICANN Org and join the ICANN community uh, for different reasons, and they move on and they leave on, and that happens all the time. Uh, my understanding is also that many, many, many years ago, there was a board member who left and did something, and that was handled within the board. So I always think that you should, we should caution ourselves to see a bigger problem that it actually exists. Uh, I'm grateful for the people working for ICANN Org, and I'm grateful as long as they stay. Thank you. Any other questions of any nature on any topic? Michaela, nothing? <laughs> You're, I'm, not, I'm not in the mood to, to get into some kind of tit for tat with you, so no. So what am I doing here? All right, anybody else needs to be entertained? Uh, any questions? No? All right, I think we have uh, maybe uh, a minute to go. We have to be, uh, can we leave that dialogue outside this room, please? Yeah, we'll have to, because it's getting very dirty. He got your attention at last, yeah, yeah he did. Okay. All right, uh, I think we're done. Uh, we have to be respectful to the other session. Joran, you wanted to say something, one minute, before we leave? No, I, uh, first of all, I appreciate that so many people come, and it's, it's, I think, for me personally, IGF is an important environment where we can discuss other things as well. But, and I, I think that one of the most important things going out of here is that we cont continue the discussion. 
that we update our opinions based on, on information we receive in connections with other people. I mean, ICANN is a multi-stakeholder model. It's actually built on conversation and changing ideas. And sometimes, if I may, we dig ourselves into you know, very hard positions and we don't listen. It is important for us, it's important for me, and it's important for all of us that we actually, we talk to each other, we exchange our opinions, and we go on together, because that's how you really reach a consensus policy. Thank you. Nigel, Master of Ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to, well, also endorse uh, Shireen's thanks for everyone for coming. Uh, GDPR, obviously, an interesting session. There is a session tomorrow, uh, session uh, 50, running from uh, 12.30 to 1.30. It's not specifically on uh, uh, ICANN and the GDPR, but it does touch on who is and certs. And uh, Sarah, one of our board members here, is uh, appearing in that. So I urge you to come along uh, to that. That's the first thing. The second thing, of course, we, we did apply, and uh, we're very always very willing to do sessions at, uh, at the IGF on uh, GDPR and who is. And uh, uh, we had hoped we would have a wider workshop, but there was an awful lot of competition this year, as you know. But come along tomorrow and uh, look forward to seeing you. On too. Is it? And there's an NCU se session on Wednesday at time? Or do at 12.30, I believe. At 12.30. So, so there'll be a lot of discussion. Yeah. It's okay. your session. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Thank you. This session is closed. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.